around 11,900 new cases of neck and head cancer in the UK every year, but charities say that patients need more support. A new study spoke to uh, more than 100 patients with the illness, and more than half of those said that they just didn't receive the right level of information to prepare them for post-treatment complications, such as issues with swallowing and changes to their voice. Well, with me now in the studio is Rachel Parsons. She's a patient ambassador uh, with the Mouth Cancer Foundation and survivor of uh, mouth cancer. Rachel, lovely to have you here. Um, just tell us a little bit about your story. So I was diagnosed in August 2008 and had nine and a half hour surgery into the September of 2008. Um, a lot of my surgery was done, my operation was done by surgery. Uh, where they basically removed the inside of my cheek. So actually, you wouldn't even know I'd had mouth cancer. You would have absolutely no idea. Um, th that's not true for everybody, though, is no. it? I mean, no. it can be quite disfiguring for people. Yeah. Um, the number of cases is, is increasing. Do you, do you know why that is? There's a high rise in the HPV virus, which is also one of the things for head and neck um, cancers. Possibly that... Um, it used to be known as an old man's disease, but there are a lot of younger ones getting head and neck cancers as well now. Well, because it was associated with smoking, maybe? Yes, okay. yes. Um, and uh, as I was just reading in the introduction there, patients feel like they're not perhaps getting enough post-operative information because some of these side effects of having been treated for this can be really life-altering can't they affect your ability to swallow yeah. affect some people's but some people lose their tongue don't they and they, yes. they can't speak um what was your experience and, and can you relate to what they're saying i think when you're originally diagnosed with cancer you don't really take into account anything else that is said to you what the other outcomes can be you just focus on the word cancer mm. so then after your surgery, you just focus on getting, trying to get better. And it's not until afterwards where you think there are, have been other, other issues. Like myself, I would have never said that I had struggled um, with mental issues. But actually, yes, I probably did. And I suppose, as you were saying, um, you know, you, you can't tell by no. looking at you. But with a lot of people, you really can tell, yes. can't you? And when it's your face and when it's you the first thing it. that people notice... Um, that's a big deal. I mean, are you in touch with, is there a community that, that you're in touch with? I, I, as you said, I'm an ambassador for the Mouth Cancer Foundation, but there are lots of head and neck um, sites on social media, which that has been, is, is great, knowledgeable of, of all people from all over the world that can offer any kind of advice or help. There's also the Swallows, and actually the Swallows founder is also a head and neck cancer patient himself. Yeah, um, I mean, what, what would your advice be? I know you say that there's all these resources out there, but if somebody contacted you directly, what what's the broad thrust of, of your advice to sufferers? For myself, I listen and I let them know that I do know how they're actually feeling because I've been there. And when you've got somebody phoning up who who are really struggling, to speak, you have to be patient and to to say that actually they're not on their own. Hmm. And, and that possibly advise them to get some sort of psychological, psychological support, yes. And what about the, the symptoms of head and neck cancer? I mean, can it be easy to overlook and you know, passed off as a sore throat? Mine was, mine was an ulcer. Was it? Mine was just a, a little ulcer that Lots of people have every day of the year, but mine just didn't disappear. Mine continued, and I would always say, if anything is in your mouth longer than three weeks, to seek medical advice. Right, OK, so it can start with something that's seemingly as benign yep. as that, and yet end up being absolutely life-changing. Yep. And, and how are you now? I'm doing really well. Yes, yeah, really so, well. so all your treatment is finished? All my treatment's finished. However, I live with cancer every day. Yeah. So, and what are what are the chances of it of this particular type of cancer recurring? I think anything is possible. You know, I go and see my consultant every year just to have a thorough checkup again. But um, it's just one of those. I think sometimes mm -hmm. I just and, live with it. And I I, I do many interviews uh, about different types of cancer, but I think this is the first time 
have done this type of, of cancer. Well, why do you think that it doesn't get the same amount of coverage as other types? I don't know, because the head and neck virus, uh, head and neck cancer is, as we said, is on the increase. And so I've never understood the amount of people that I speak to with regards to head and neck cancer, because since my diagnosis, I, have done, I do do a lot of raising awareness. The amount of people that don't actually even know about head and neck cancer is, is just unbelievable. Mm. So I just don't know why it's not up there with, with the rest. Yeah. Okay. Well, as I said, uh, you look absolutely amazing. You. you look a picture of health and uh, it's great to have you on the show. Thank and, you uh, Thank you very me. much for your advice for those uh, who may need it. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you.